This episode is sponsored by Bright Cellars, a monthly wine subscription that matches you with fine wine you'll love and delivers it right to your door. Just take a quick seven-question quiz to get started. For a limited time only, get 60% off your first four-bottle box plus a bonus bottle. The link is in the video description. Now you see, the trick with paella is to use just enough saffron to complement the shellfish. Okay. Oh, man, that is so good. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the paella from Parks and Rec. Now, I've been too timid to tangle with paella for many years, because I'm afraid of it. After all, the word paella does translate directly to, that is an authentic paella. But when Alan Yang was kind enough to give me an amazing shout out on his podcast, Parks and Recollection, and Robert Lowe himself mentioned the paella, I knew that it was finally time. So as you can see, I have all the trappings of an authentic seafood paella. To all my Spanish friends, disculpas de antemano. First up, we're measuring half a kilo of arroz calaspara, a traditional and expensive paella rice, covering half a pound of clams in cold water and letting them sit for one to two hours, move slowly so they stay asleep. And then we gotta prep our prawns, whole head-on big old honking prawns that we're gonna twist the head off of, peel and de-vein, reserving the heads and shells. Because we need some really good seafood stock for this recipe, so I'm gonna use those to fortify some store-bought stuff. Once all but our four prettiest prawns are peeled, we're lightly salting the peeled ones and setting those aside for about half an hour before cooking. Next up, I'm chopping an onion. Because along with the prawn heads and shells, we're throwing those into a large preheated stock pot where they're gonna sear and get a little bit of color on them before we deglaze with two liters of water or store-bought fish stock. Throw in a big old handful of fresh parsley, a few bay leaves, some peppercorns. Hold at a gentle simmer for 30 to 45 minutes, skimming off any scum that floats to the top. Strain it through a fine mesh sieve and boom, super flavorful shellfish stock. In addition to all the shellfish, a common ingredient in Spanish seafood paella is cuttlefish. So I got about five of those here, whose beaks I'm going to trim off, and whom I'm going to cut into one-inch bite-sized pieces. I'm also going to grate two tomatoes on the large holes of a box grater, straining the results if there's too much moisture. And with that, we're ready to make paella. And since the only paella pan I got is huge, we got to do this outside. So just throw the stuff on the stove and put it on high, I guess, and it'll, it'll probably be fine. I'm also seeing that aprons don't work so great with shorts. Anyway, we got our jet engine primed. We're going to start by salting our paella pan, adding some neutral flavored oil, getting it nice and hot, and using it to sear our unpeeled prawns. You just want to get some solid color on the outside of these. We're going to finish cooking them in the paella. So once your prawns are seared on both sides, go ahead and fish them out, set them aside, add a little bit more oil to the pan if necessary, and then add our finely chopped onion, which we're going to sweat for one to three minutes until they're starting to turn translucent around the edges, adding the cuttlefish and sauteing together for one to two minutes. Then kind of like a stir fry, we're going to scoot everybody to the outside edge and toast one and a half teaspoons of sweet paprika in a little bit more oil. This stuff burns quick, so don't let it go too long. Add your grated and drained tomatoes and let those cook down until no liquid remains. And while that's cooking, I'm going to do something I should have done a while ago, which is to infuse one teaspoon of saffron threads in a little bit of our stock. Next up, we're adding our paella rice. If you can't find paella rice, you can use arborio rice. And much like we would in risotto, we're toasting the rice for about one minute. But then we're doing the exact opposite of risotto, adding all of our stock at once, 48 ounces worth, plus our little bit of saffron and fuse stuff, and then cooking at an aggressive simmer without stirring at all. The goal here is to allow the rice to cook entirely while forming a crispy socarrat on the bottom of the pan. After about 10 minutes, once roughly 70% of the water has been absorbed by the rice, we're arranging all of our seafood on top of the rice with decorative intent. We're then reducing the heat to medium so that we don't burn the socarrat while we finish cooking our seafood through. Once the seafood's almost done cooking, we're going to kill the heat and cover the pan with a clean cloth letting everybody sit and settle for 10 minutes before serving. Lots and lots of lemons make for positive paella presentation. A little bit of finishing salt never hurt anybody unless you have high blood pressure. And this guy's ready to serve. Now, my center was burned to a crisp. Turns out that giant outdoor stove I have gets pretty hot, but most of this pan has a killer crispy bottom and tons and tons of flavor. And Jerry Gary Larry Gergich is right. You want just the right amount of saffron to complement the shellfish flavor. I guess that's two things Ben Wyatt and I have in common. I'm pro calzone and I'm pro Jerry or Terry, whatever his name was. Thanks again to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's episode. The wine comes right to your door and their packaging has the smallest carbon footprint in the industry. I've been working with Bright Sellers for a few years and each box just gets better and better. With the seafood paella, I'll be enjoying Hazelaire's Roussin, a full-bodied mineral forward white wine. Bright Sellers makes it easy to choose wines that match the occasion, from a dinner pairing to a backyard gathering. For a limited time only, get 60% off your first four bottle box plus a bonus bottle. That's $100 worth of wine for only $30 plus shipping. The link is in the video description. Thank you.